Yo, what's good? Big Z here, and welcome to part three of my mixing masterclass. Congrats to the winner of this week's mix and master contest. All you have to do is comment below, and I'll pick the winner for next week in a few days. So last week we mixed all the drums in the track. This week we're going to be focusing on the bass. The bass is definitely one of the most important parts of the mix, especially the sub bass. If your sub bass level is off, it can throw off your entire mix. So it's definitely important to get that sub bass level sitting at the right spot in the mix. We're also going to be talking about how to dial in the right amount of bass sidechain. And then we're going to talk about the difference of the verse bass versus the drop or chorus bass and how you want the verse bass to be a little bit lower so that chorus or drop bass has more impact. So this is where we left off with the drum mix. Now I'm just gonna move this loop over here just so we can focus on the first bass part of the drop. So that's what our bass sounds like now, pretty stale and flat. Let's see if we can breathe some more life into it. So first of all, I'm going to send this to a bass bus right here, and I'm gonna sidechain and compress it to the kick. Bus 24 is where we have our kick going, so all I need to do is lower the threshold and mess around with the release time. So that's going to be good for the mid-range and top range of the bass. But I'm going to want the sub part of the bass, like everything below like 100, 120 hertz, to have even more side chain. So it's really getting out of the way of the low end of the kick. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to set up a multi-band compressor on my bass bus after the side chain I just did. So I'm going to use FabFilter Pro MB for this. And I'm going to make a band down here that's going to go below like 120 hertz right there. I'm gonna side chain this to the kick, and I gotta make sure this uh, external side chain button is on in the expert panel. And then I'm just gonna make sure that the sub frequencies of the bass are dipping even more than the mid and high frequencies when the kick is playing. By the way, for sidechain, you definitely want a really fast attack time, so the signal dips right away when the kick plays, but then you can mess around with the release time depending on your track. So now we're adding about six decibels more of sidechain compression on the sub bass, compared to the other bass. So it's 12 decibels total for the sub bass, but around six decibels for everything else in the mid range and high range of the bass. Now we need to focus on the tone and the width and everything else in the bass. So let's go back to our reference track, that Tujamo track I'm using and see how the bass sounds in his track. I just can't get enough for you. I Now we can work on the tone and match our sub bass level to that reference track. So I'm going to pull up the EQ I have after the referencing plugin, and I'm going to make it in the 30 hertz to 100 hertz range. Then I'm going to pull up an EQ on that bass track. And now I'm going to go back and forth and try to get this sub bass level sitting right in the mix. So you can see his sub bass level is sitting right around here in the mix, and that's what I'm gonna try to do.
Now let's move on to the next range. I like to go from 250 down to 100 hertz to see how that area is sounding. And when I listen to his reference track, I'm only trying to reference the bass. I'm only listening to the bass. So that range sounds okay. Let's move on to the next range. Moving on. Obviously, I'm not trying to match his bass exactly. I'm just using it as a reference to see if any specific tones in my bass are sticking out and don't sound good. Let's move on to the high end and see how that's sounding. It's actually sounding pretty comparable. Let's see the very top end from like 4,000 hertz up. If I really want the top end of my bass to cut through on different systems, then it's really good to boost the high end in this scenario. For this track, I like doing that. All right, let's see how everything sounds now. I wanna try something else. I'm gonna add Fab Filter Saturn and see how adding a little bit of saturation sounds. I just moved it before the EQ. So that's definitely adding a little bit more grittiness and adding some harmonics to that bass. Now I do want the drop of this song to be really dry and not have a lot of reverb, but let's add some short room reverb to the bass. So I have this reverb bass bus already set up. Here's what the reverb looks like. I'll probably tweak it. Also before the reverb, I have this multiband transient designer that I can get the attack from the bass out of the reverb so it sounds smoother. That sounds good for that. Let's see what happens if I try to widen up the high end a little bit. I have this bus down here called wide that is really just taking everything out below like 250 hertz. And then I'm using chorus and sound toys micro shift to widen the signal up. So I can use this bus to add width to anything in my mix.
So I think that actually made the bass sound a lot more full. I like that move. Now let's compare how it sounded before to how it sounds now. So I'm just gonna take everything off that I just did. And now I'll put it back on. So I think that sounds a lot better. I didn't even need to use any compression here because I know that I already heavily compressed this bass in the production stage. So that's why I didn't add any more of that. Now let's mix in the brick bass. So I just sent that to the same bass bus just so it's getting side chain to the kick as well. The kick is quieter in the verses so it's not going to create as much side chain which is what I want. But this is sounding really dry. For this track I'm going to want the breaks to sound more atmospheric with more reverb and then the drop to be really dry which is kind of opposite than a lot of tracks but I think it'll work well for this style. So let's add some reverb here. Let's see if there are any harsh frequencies we can reduce in this sound. Now let's compare the level of what's happening in the sub range of this bass to what's going on in the drop. So I'm just gonna go back and forth from this section to the drop section, with only the bass is playing. I'm gonna pull up my EQ for this so I can see what's going on. So that's the level of my drop bass. So I kind of want that. I want it to be quieter in the verse so the drop has more impact, but I might be able to raise the low end of this a little bit. One last thing I have to make sure of is that everything under around like 150 hertz is mono. I don't want any stereo signal in that range. So on my master bus, I have this EQ set up that I'm gonna turn on, and I already have it set up so everything below 150 hertz is mono. You can change that depending on the track, but that's the range that I like to do it in. And once we have the whole track mixed in, we can keep tweaking each element of this mix. So this is not a final mix for the bass by any means, but it's definitely sounding good to me right now. So thanks for watching this part in the mixing series. I'll catch you guys again next week for the next part. Have a good week. Peace. No, I'm not lonely. <laughs>